I'm a dancer, and I'm a traveler. And wherever I go, I experience the world one dance at a time. I'm Michaela Malazzi, and this is Bare Feet in NYC. Bare Feet is supported in part by... Bloomberg Connects gives you a way to experience the arts from your mobile phone. You can explore hundreds of cultural organizations from around the world, anytime, anywhere. Learn more at BloombergConnects.org or wherever you find your apps. Indian culture is best known for its colorful and vibrant energy, and that's no exception here in New York City, especially when we are the city with the largest Indian American population in North America. Over 200,000 Indian Americans call New York their home, and with them come the traditions, customs, language, food, and celebrations that have become part of New York's cultural landscape as well. On this Bare Feet in NYC adventure, I seek out the festive and joyous celebrations that Indian Americans have brought to our city, including the beautiful dances and music that go along with them. Serena Jane, Indian American, fitness guru, and entrepreneur, is the founder and creator of Masala Bhangra. Her love for her Indian culture and her infectious energy is what drew me to her when I first took her Masala Bhangra class over 10 years ago. Serena is a pioneer in helping bring the Indian dance culture into the mainstream. How? Well, she brings it to the gym in New York and all around the world. Namaste, welcome to Masala Bhangra. Masala in Hindi means spicy. Bhangra is a folk dance from the north part of India. This class is combined with the folk of Bhangra and the exhilaration of Bollywood. I'm gonna ask you to channel your masculine side with Bhangra, your feminine grace with Bollywood, put it together and you get Masala Bhangra. Lean back, fall back, go back, other side. Boom, two, three, last time, go. Whoa. 10 years ago, I joined Crunch Gym. I walked in on a Tuesday night. Your hair was flying. <laughs> People were spinning, shouting. They had smiles on their faces, and I was like, I want to do that. And you helped me fall in love with Bollywood movies, the Indian culture. I started learning Hindi. <laughs> I mean, you really introduced me to a whole other world, and then you brought dance back into my life. I thank you, first of all. <laughs> I was born and raised in the States and was born and raised to two parents who migrated here. So we grew up watching Bollywood movies. We grew up speaking Hindi at home. We grew up with the entire accent and everything. And we went to India every summer. And so there was so much Indian influence in my life. But when you interact with me, there is something about India that's going to come out in some way, shape, or form. Bale Bale in Punjab means woo! So whenever, you know, whenever we celebrate anything and everything, we shout out, Bale Bale. When I got married, my mom's like, Bale Bale. <laughs> Everyone shouts that out. <laughs> Woo! Hi, Bale Bale! Bale Bale! Woo! We walk down the streets and they recognize me and say, Bale Bale! <laughs> yeah. Some people think that's my name. <laughs> When my father passed away to a massive cardiac arrest at the age of 47, that, you know, just killed our lives. My mom was 40, we were in our late teens, and dad would always say, be proud to be Indian, be proud of, to be who you are, don't ever let anyone make you feel embarrassed or whatnot, just to, to be your culture. Not only am I proud to be Indian, I'm going around the world and getting everybody been moving Indian style and saying bale bale, and it, it's wild yeah. to, to watch where it's grown today. Yeah. yeah. Get him in. I hope this rocked out your afternoon. Please go do something amazing now. Five, six, bale bale. Ready? Bale bale! From the fusion of northern India's folk dance, I make my way to southern India via the dancers of Alokam. Bharati and Jyotsna are two classical Indian dancers who recently made New York City their home to pursue performing and teaching classical dance professionally. They are giving me a bit of a crash course in Bharatanatyam, the classical Indian dance that dates back to the third century BCE. Bharatanatyam uh, comes from the Natya Shastra, which is a very, very ancient scripture. 
Training to become a Bharatanatyam dancer takes years. Not only must a dancer master the movements, but he or she must start with the understanding and knowledge of Sanskrit, the classical Indian language of Hinduism. The Natya Shastra covers aspects of drama, like theater, um, poetry, music, dance. And Bharatanatyam as a dance form um, evolved from the Devadasi community. I think you can equate it to almost the geisha um, practice in Japan. Bharatanatyam dances tell a story, and each of the dancers may play multiple characters at the same time, changing from one to another with facial expressions, varying movements, and even a turn or a twirl to signify the switch. That's why you, you saw expressions yeah. that were... One was, you were very scared, and you yeah. were like this aggressive, aggressive yeah. and then at one point, again, there was this motion of this. Yeah. This piece is actually called the Nandi Sol. Nataraja is the lord of dance, travels on a, on a cow, which is called Nandi, who's also his most ardent devotee, friend, companion, everything. There was a, a sort of fast part in the dance. Yes, Nandi Sol, yes. Now, I, it, I could see the uh, evolution of the story. Yes. It started very slowly, and you also started with a prayer. Was that a prayer? Mm -hmm. Can we, can I learn that? So this, this mudra that you're holding is called the Kataka Mukham. Yes. There are about 55 different hand movements, or mudras, in Bharatanatyam practice. And as the ancient text on the arts, the Natya Shastra, beautifully states, where the hand is, the eyes follow. Where the eyes go, the mind follows. Where the mind is, there is feeling. Where there is feeling, there is appreciation. Yeah. Wonderful. So Bharti, what is... This is just, a, what, a nine meters of cloth? It's a six meter cloth. Six meter cloth. Yeah. Same thing you would use for a sari, right? Yes, like it's, a it's a sari. It is a sari. It is a sari. Bharatanatyam originated as a temple dance in the Hindu religion, used as a form of worship and devotion to the gods. As local kings invited temple dancers to perform in the courts, the dances evolved into a form of entertainment. Look how long this cloth is. That's half of it, right? The other half is wrapped around my other leg. <laughs> Indian American parents here in New York City have opened their homes to Bharati and Jyotsna and have hosted dance classes in their basements and living rooms to make sure that lessons are available to their children. It is an honor to have the accessibility to learn even the basics of Bharatanatyam. <laughs> they're so heavy, but they're beautiful. Okay. How do you dance with these on? You just get used to yeah, it. Yeah, you just get used to it. Oh my it. gosh, this is so cool. All of this is very, a little, for me, it's cumbersome. I'm not used to having mm -hmm. these well, earrings and the headpiece. And yeah. They make a big difference on the on feeling. The yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I have to remember the choreography. Yeah! <laughs> and then we do the prayer at the end, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This was beautiful. I make my way to Little India, 74th Street in Jackson Heights, Queens, one of the 24 neighborhoods locally referred to as Little India throughout New York City. This neighborhood is one of the most diverse neighborhoods in New York and in the entire United States, with over 50% of its residents being born abroad. I meet with Subrato Bhattacharya, local food guide who regularly leads tours in Jackson Heights, featuring the cuisine of his homeland. Oh, wonderful. Right, it's a yogurt base? Basically three things, yogurt, water, and mango pulp. Oh. So that's it. It's delicious. I'm ready. Call it basmati rice. Basmati which is long grain rice, tandoori chicken, mm -hmm. which is marinated with yogurt and everything, spice, and is baked goat curry. Goat curry. The, the lamb is not used very much, mm -hmm. but the goat is very popular in India. This is the kari pakoda. This is the dumplings. Oh, wow. Hopefully my stomach won't explode. Subrato, I want to just dive right into this plate. Okay, so basically, uh, two things. People will start with the bread. Bread. With the with the vegetable, and then we'll finish it with the rice. Oh. So that's what oh. the whole thing. Mm. Oh. 
It's delicious. And technically, I'm supposed to be eating with my hands, huh? Uh, usually, usually, why we eat with fingers? Because each finger is also interrelated with the organs. Oh. And once we, the fingers have pressures, the acupuncture things uh -huh. with the Chinese medicine, the same thing as finger. So when we have plates, we mix together and the food and the six taste buds in the tongue also, which gives you a whole concept of the food and everything. Ah, wow. So the fennel this seeds? It's like a fennel seeds. But the, the, this one, the colors are the little bit of sugar inside mm -hmm. also. But it gives you a little... Mm. You wash your palate. Mm -hmm. It's a little and bitter. It, is, it helps you to digest your food also. Mm -hmm. Builds up an anxiety and all the things and cleans up your tongue. Also. Very good. Diwali is known as the Festival of Lights, and it is one of the most important holidays in the Hindu religion. A week of preparations lead up to the celebrations, and here in Little India, the stores and shops stock up on Diwali staples like decorations and lanterns. Now I see these colorful candle-looking things. What are these? These are called, we put into fire. Each every house will have this. Is a, is a good against the evil. Ah, so these, these are more traditional clay ones. These were filled with oil? We filled with oil. The whole house outside all been light up. Oh, wow. Literally feels like we're in India right now because right. you can find anything you need. And right before the festive season of Diwali, they have, they're in preparation for it. It's wonderful. I want all of these. I want all of them. They're mine. India loves jewelry. So India is the highest consumer of jewelry. Wow. So right from the child is born, the daughter, the parents start collecting jewelry. These are Such beautiful. Such beautiful jewelry. It's gorgeous. Indian has to take sweets as candies to their family. To so the family with Andiwali. Every season, anything. If I want to visit your home, I have to carry a sweet candy mm. box. Let's go get, yeah. let's go find some sweets. Indian sweets are made from ghee, a class of clarified butter whose process originated in ancient India. I tried the barfi, an Indian sweet that is very popular during Diwali. Barfi is made with sugar, ghee, and various spices, including cardamom. It's very dense. Very sweet. Very sweet. But it's very, very beautiful and very mm, good. Mm. Oh my gosh. Ghee is an extremely important part of the Indian tradition. Not only is it revered for its nutritional and medicinal qualities, it is considered to be sacred since it is made from cow's milk. Bye. From Little India and Jackson Heights, Queens, I make my way to Greenwich Village in Manhattan at La Poisson Rouge. Once a month, this trendy music venue hosts Basement Bhangra, a Punjabi-influenced dance party hosted by Indian-American DJ Rekha. Bhangra likes salsa. Right. To dance into music, that's what I say. Cool. So we're going to Bhangra tonight. We are. Awesome. It's all about the shoulders. <laughs> like this, right? Yeah, like this. That's all you got to do. We have a professional dancing throw. <laughs> you don't have to rely on the <laughs> Not only does DJ Rekha share the music of Bhangra's fusion with hip hop, but she also realizes the power of sharing the dance as well. So what I want everybody to do is take a step this way and right. So what you're doing is mirroring me this way and right. Every basement Bhangra party kicks off with a crash course in Bhangra dance, especially helpful for any first timers in the crowd. Bhangra has become sort of a ubiquitous term for Punjabi dance music and Punjabi folk music, but um, it has a distinctive style to it. You know, one thing we've managed to do in the years of doing this party is catch people at the right moment when we can still get them before we can't get them. Yeah. Or we get people who 
even though they're too big, they still want to come they here. They just love you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they, they just, you know, re real performers, real artists, they just want to perform for a live crowd. <laughs> The dole, or the two-sided drum, has been made popular with songs by Punjabi MC and Jay-Z. But originally, this drum is believed to have been brought over to India via Persia in the early 15th century. One end of the drum is lower, creating the bass sound, while the other end is a higher register, creating a voice in the treble, hence creating two different sounds with one drum. New York City is such a touchstone for culture. Yeah. And I feel that even though this music originally comes from Punjab, a region divided by India and Pakistan, and much of the music is actually produced in the UK, um, this party could only have happened here. It is rooted in Bhangra music, but it also has a real strong hip hop sensibility. It has a nod to dance hall music and dub, which is very much infused in, in the Bhangra that I play as well. And New Yorkers love a good dance party. India's influence continues to be found throughout the city. I head to Chelsea Piers on 23rd Street and the West Side Highway to join Garba in the city, an Indian dance event in celebration of the Navaratri festival. The celebration's name means nine nights in Sanskrit, and it is a festival dedicated to Durga, a Hindu goddess. Navaratri is celebrated in the time leading up to Diwali. cultural event that takes place at Chelsea Piers, an annual event during the Hindu festival of Navratri. My husband and I are actually South Indian, we're from the state of Tamil Nadu, but we were very enthusiastic dancers in, um, you know, growing up in college, I was part of a dance team, he was part of a Ross team. You know, we just generally both enjoy dance events. I feel like I'm in a Bollywood movie because every Bollywood movie I've ever seen, there's women dressed in these beautiful outfits, there's synchronized dancing, there's colors. It's amazing. One of the perks, I think, is having this much space at Chelsea Piers. The fact that it's a Garba Ross that's in Manhattan, which is typically in the suburbs, in New Jersey, in Long Island, Queens. Um, so it's nice to have this right, right in the backyard for a lot of young professionals who work in the city. Tana sisters, who are friends of mine, and we've danced together yeah. for many years. You two have danced together for many, many, many years. When we were kids growing up, um, our parents, they didn't, we didn't have a lot of Indian families and friends, but they would get together and we'd dance at the local high school. I actually would never have thought that so many years later we could celebrate Garba at Chelsea Piers in New York City. It's right. kind of crazy. It's amazing. And very cool. Garba is a dance that comes from the state of Gujarat in India. It means womb in Sanskrit, and the dancers move in a circular motion around a central light or pillar, forming a series of concentric circles. This dance represents life. One garba can last over 45 minutes. The music starts slowly, speeding up gradually, and by the end of the dance, it is a vigorous swirl of people. which is, um, you know, the rhythmic, fast-paced dancing in a circle. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're going to get into the Ras, which is used with dandia sticks. Um, and it's also a very rhythmic um, movement, but it's typically done in lines rather than in circles. Okay. I'm going to try Ras right now. Okay, I've never right. done it. You're going to be awesome. The climax of the evening is the dandia Ras, the Gujarati folk dance that incorporates wooden sticks. These sticks, or the dandias, represent the swords that the goddess Durga used to fight and overthrow the demon king, Mahishasura.
Every year, in celebration of Diwali, South Street Seaport in Lower Manhattan turns into an Indian-themed bazaar. Stages with performances, food stalls, street vendors, and more all come together to celebrate the Festival of Lights. For over 25 years, the Association of Indians in America's New York chapter hosts this annual event. So beautiful, yet all very sad. So we started in 1967, and in, a, in about 1983, we recognized that we needed Diwali. Yeah. Diwali was not being celebrated anywhere in the U.S. Wow. I think the whole thing, idea started 28 years ago, was indeed to bring our Indian culture, Indian festivals, Indian food, and just that, that Americans, as such, can know about our community. Can you tell us a little bit about what we can expect here today? We've got two stages, uh -huh. which are going to really showcase our local talent. Along with it, we can't really not have Indian festival without wonderful cuisines. Food, yes. Food, so we've got a variety of our vendors. I've got chickpeas, chicken, and rice. And we're gonna get some masala chai, which is the tea, because I need a little energy right now. Chai tea, which is black tea with spices. The best. And it'll keep you up for hours. This is amazing. The Diwali celebration, also referred to as Deepavali, signifies the victory of good over evil. It takes place during the darkest new moon in the Hindu lunar solar month of Kartika. In the Gregorian calendar, that translates to sometime between mid-October and mid-November. years now here in New York. Um, when I came here, there wasn't a lot to promote Indian culture, and I thought, you know, dance is such an, it's such a fun thing here in New York. I mean, there's so many Broadway shows, so many different types of dance classes that you can take, but there was nothing fun like Bollywood. There's a lot of classical, but just nothing more modern, upbeat, something that people would really enjoy, like, and Bhangra as well. Yeah. Growing up in a Punjabi family, when I was very small, every weekend there was a house party. The circle of friends that my parents kept, they were they were very fun people, people who liked to really party and enjoy themselves. They all had kids, you know, we all used to, you know, hang around each other and stuff. We learned a lot just by watching them dance. You know? I, I watch, I love Bollywood movies. They're about three and a half hours long, for anybody who doesn't know. But they're beautiful. There's so much dance, there's so much music. Bollywood dancing is a mix of everything. Right. It depends on what's happening in that exact moment in the film. Right. So there could be some very high energy Bhangra style dancing. Mm -hmm. Then at one moment you have something more hip hop. And then at another moment you might not have any dancing at all and it's just all about emotions. What people find is when they take Bollywood dancing, it's also a way to kind of escape from their everyday stressful life. Yeah. Pooja and her students let me join in on today's performance after only having one rehearsal. Ah, grab, punch, grab, punch, roll, up, dun, 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 dun. roll, up, one, two, da, da, up, and then, dang, 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 dang. Indian dancers wear bangles. Almost, almost. Close. We are about to go on stage to perform our Bhangra song. I'm a little nervous. I'm going to run it one more time, and I'll see you on stage. In so many ways, New Yorkers can celebrate the beautiful traditions, dances, and festivals that Indian Americans have brought with them and preserved right here in our own city. 
festivals celebrating life, festivals celebrating light, and dances celebrating ancient stories and traditions are what I found with every New Yorker sharing their Indian heritage with me. Dance is my gateway to connect with my city, and as it so happens, it's also the gateway for so many other New Yorkers too. And I'll see you on my next Bare Feet in NYC adventure, wherever it may take me. You can stay connected with us on TravelBareFeet.com, where you'll find extra bonus videos, join our Bare Feet series conversations through social media, and stay updated with our newsletter. Keep singing. <laughs> Ready for Bollywood. Ready for Bollywood with my little whistle.